Hello everyone! How are you? I hope you are all doing great. By the way, I am Teacher Christine. Welcome to Oral Communication in Context class. Cheer up your minds and learn something with me today. Oral Communication in Context is one of the core subjects offered in the senior high school that aims to develop the listening and speaking skills and strategies for effective communication of the students. It addresses the need of developing the students' oral communication skills in preparation for the world of work, entrepreneurship, and or pursuing higher education. One of the most essential learning competencies required by the Department of Education for this subject is to explain the functions, nature, and process of communication. In this video, we will only focus on the nature and process of communication. At the end of the lesson, we will be able to answer the following questions. 1. What is communication? 2. What is the nature of communication? 3. What are its elements? And 4. How does the process of communication happen? To start, take a look at these pictures. What do you think do these pictures show? Correct! These pictures show us the idea of communication. But what is communication? Why is communication important? Communication is from the Latin term communicare, which means to share or to make common. This suggests that communication is an act that brings people together or an experience shared by individuals who subsequently establish relationships and communities. Communication is a two-way process of connecting to both living and non-living things. It is also a means of sharing and exchanging messages, information, ideas, and feelings for mutual understanding. We exchange ideas with the end goal of understanding one another's messages. From the minute you wake up to the moment you sleep, you engage in communication. As you move from your comfort zone towards a wider community around you, you constantly perceive and express ideas. You may be doing so with your family members, with your classmates, or even with yourself. Because communication is important in interacting with others, it is important to understand its nature and elements. Let's start with its nature. Number 1. Communication is a process. It may be seen as a flow of information. This simply means that communication among people is active and cyclical. It begins from one step, then to another step. Number two, communication occurs between two or more people. In here, the sender and the speaker take an active part. This emphasizes social contact among humans. In other words, communication is interactive. Number three, communication can be expressed through written or spoken words, actions or nonverbal or both spoken words and nonverbal actions at the same time. This means that communication is symbolic. Communication is divided into elements which help us better understand its mechanics or process. The elements are the following. Number one, sender or speaker. This represents the source of information or message. He or she is the one who delivers the message to the receiver. Number two is the message. This refers to the information, ideas, or thoughts conveyed by the speaker in words or actions. Number three is encoding. This is the process of converting the message into words, actions, or other forms that the speaker understands. Number four is channel. This serves as the vehicle used in transmitting messages or ideas. It can be personal or non-personal, written, verbal or spoken, or non-verbal, which refers to actions, gestures, or facial expression, 
in which the encoded message is conveyed. Number five is decoding. It is the process of interpreting the encoded message. This is done by the receiver. The receiver is the recipient or the one who receives the message. Next is feedback. This refers to the reactions, responses, or information provided by the receiver. Number eight is context. This is the environment where communication takes place. It can be a face-to-face -face interaction, a fun conversation, a group discussion, a meeting or interview, a letter, a class recitation, and many others. Number nine is barrier. This is a factor that affects the flow of communication. Noise is an example of a barrier. It can affect the sending and the receiving of the message. Now that you know the nature and elements of communication, let's talk about its process. How does communication take place? Who are involved? What processes are considered? Let's study this illustration. As seen in the illustration, communication begins when the speaker or source of communication responds to stimulus and decides to encode or transmit it in the form of a message or a code through a particular channel or means of communication. The receiver decodes or interprets the message sent and responds accordingly based on his interpretation of the message. This response comes in the form of a feedback sent to the original source of the message, that is, the sender. As the communication transaction continues, the sender and the receiver may exchange roles until understanding is achieved. Barriers to communication sometimes block the transmission of the message, thereby creating misunderstanding. Through this process, we are able to understand that communication is systematic. In the advent of technology, the exchange of information and messages in society has advanced and has been a subject of many studies. By understanding the process of communication, we can also duly avoid misunderstandings or miscommunication. Now let's have a recap of what we have learned. Remember that communication is the process of sending and receiving messages through verbal and nonverbal means. It can happen between two or more people. It is interactive and it is symbolic. What are its elements? There are nine elements, namely sender, message, encoding, channel, decoding, receiver, feedback, context, and barrier. The process starts from the sender. The sender generates an idea, encodes it into a message, then delivers it through channel. When the receiver gets the message, he decodes or interprets it based on the context. The sending and the reception of the message can be affected by a barrier. The receiver can also send back a message which is called feedback. As the communication transaction continues, the sender and the receiver may exchange roles until understanding is achieved. So there you go. I hope you were able to understand the nature and process of communication. This time, let's have a game. It's called, What's the Word? I am going to show you pictures. Then give the element of communication that these pictures are referring to. You can write your answers on your notebook. You will be given 10 seconds to answer each item. Are you ready? Let's start! Here's the first item. Number 2. Number three.
Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Now let's check your answers. For the first item, the pictures depict a message. For the next, these pictures show a sender. How about this? Yes, it's feedback. And for number four? Yes, these pictures depict a receiver. For number five, the pictures mean context. How about number six? Good, they refer to the element encoding. For number seven, it's buyer. Very good. Number eight, it's decoding. And for the last item, channel is being depicted. There you go. Did you get the correct answers? Very good. This time, let's have another activity. It's called Social Media Post. Show what you've learned creatively. Compose a Twitter or Facebook post of your most important insights about the definition, nature, and process of communication. Include hashtags at the end of your post. So that ends our lesson. See you on the next video.